is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. To another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we got a big sell-off today, down 1.8% uh, on the S&P cash. That comes out to 52. Dow's off of 476.58. NASDAQ's off 174, and uh, I'm out here picking up some stocks, and uh, yeah, they're doing pretty good. Um, the old saying is, uh, buy them while they're crying, sell them while they're yelling, and uh, why we might be a day or two off before we see uh, the indexes bottom, certainly some of these stocks are starting to look like uh, they'd be pretty good buys. Um, and showing some relatively decent strength uh, against the market. So today is a great day, especially if you think that this is going to burn out fairly quickly. And, of course, uh, one of the other big features of today it is options expiration, uh, the start of it, where everybody goes adult and neutral. Uh, it is not uncommon to see the market get pushed around very hard on this day, uh, but 80% uh, of the time, a week from this Friday, so seven more trading days, eight more trading, seven more trading days from today. Um, Eighty percent of the time, the market's higher. Um, I see a massive selling of uh, puts today, which also tells me that we're probably fairly close to some kind of significant low. Uh, does that take all the way into Friday to come out? Yes. Uh, will the best buys? And the stock market probably be up and already on the go uh, by the close today? I think the answer is uh, yes, a resounding yes. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just one, uh, no one knows anything. I heard somebody say earlier on the TV as I was going across the uh, Weather Channel, I got on one of the financial infotainment. And someone was saying, uh, the stock market's going straight to that, or the uh, stock market's going straight to, to uh, that, higher and lower. Both of them, wildly higher and wildly lower numbers. And the answer is, nobody really knows, right? And just because it didn't happen that way last time doesn't mean it can happen again. All we can do is try to figure out what is the most probable output and set our stops. A lot of things and a lot of times will be wrong. But one thing uh, I've found well, did pretty well this year uh, on is uh, when everybody's uh, uh, crying, it's time to be buying. And uh, we kind of see that right now. Anyway, uh, as we said, uh, kind of hitting these lows off 56 on the S&P cash. Um, kind of liked um, a lot of, of the uh, negative nay bombs of negativity um, on TV, too. They help make lows in the market. Uh, they do that by probably screaming the most when uh, it's almost over. Uh, that I saw uh, spe uh, talking heads, uh, at least uh, in print, talking about them being on TV and telling everybody how the end is nigh always makes me think that, man, it's probably pretty close to go the other way. And uh, it served me well this year. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on uh, this stuff as we go along. But uh, like I said, uh, normally somewhere around 2 o'clock on Wednesday is when they're done going delta neutral. And when they're done going delta neutral, the market has a fairly good opportunity to go the other way. And we'll keep an eye on it. Now, if you're horribly bearish, probably the, the thing that you would love best is a nice uh, correction on the way back up and uh, another opportunity to short. So if you're bearish, then I'm only uh, telling you that maybe you'll have yet another time to come after the market. If you're bullish, 
then I'm telling you that there probably isn't a better day to find the kind of risk reward in the market that only comes maybe two or three times a year. Uh, what else is going on out here? And we're off 53 on the S&P now, off uh, 513 on the Dow. Um, volume, uh, first question of the day is fairly good. We've got 5.3 billion shares. I do not suspect we're going to get anywhere close to 10 billion, which would tell me that uh, the end is truly nigh, but uh, probably somewhere around eight, eight and a half billion shares, which would still be good, but not near the 12 billion uh, shares we came down on in February. This seems to be kind of a lighter version of that uh, uh, late January, February low. And uh, I'll be playing it that way. Um, not willing to go south a great deal uh, in these trades, but uh, you can have some fairly decent and narrow um, stops uh, on quality stocks. And by quality, I mean that uh, People aren't yelling and screaming and lighting themselves on fire because they own them. Um, there are a lot of positions out here where people did it. Uh, my sector indicators or sector oscillators are saying that at least a couple of sectors out here have probably already found the bottom today. I'm looking for the rest of them over the next couple of days uh, to find that. And then probably we'll see the bigger move, uh, even if it's a counter move, uh, in the S&Ps. Uh, yep, get in there and buy, Mortimer. Buy, buy, buy. Uh, what else is going on out here? Uh, you know, we had a little bit of weakness in the dollar. We're trading at uh, 95.10 on the, uh, uh, what is that, the uh, December 18th contract uh, on uh, call. Now, this came off about 95.45, um, about 9 o'clock. Uh, yeah, kind of a little double top on the day. And, of course, the other thing we want to be watching is whether or not the TLT imploded. It's off 81 cents, uh, but we're holding fairly uh, even here at 113. This looks like the retrace of the move before. So maybe we could get yet another bounce out of this TLT, uh, out of the support area. Uh, my guess is you could get back up to 114, 115. And that may make a larger ABC on the way down. So uh, I think there's a lot out there for bears and bulls today. If you're a bear and have been short, uh, you can uh, ring the register and make a bunch of money or even maybe hold it another couple of days, maybe, uh, and hope for that uh, B to C portion. Uh, if you're thinking that the market does nothing but go higher after this taper tantrum, uh, from uh, the uh, government, then uh, you've got a little bit of that. So uh, a little bit of something for everyone. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. And on this day in 1985, the hijacking of the Italian cruise ship Achille Laurel reaches a dramatic climax when U.S. Navy F-14 fighters intercept an Egyptian airliner attempting to fly the Palestinian hijackers to freedom. Of course, we forced them down on American Air Force Base and arrested them. And uh, eh, that's uh, when America's acting strong. Eh, not a bad thing to happen. We'll be back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, 
You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I may have had a fairly big signal in the options market over the uh, commercial break here. Do not be surprised to see the S&P come up uh, on the cash anyway and close at 2850. Uh, anyway, we'll be looking at that. Uh, we're going to go to a phone call, and that is John in Philly. How are you doing today, John? David, I'm doing great. Thanks for taking the call. David, um, I have a question that dovetails precisely with uh, uh, the, the content uh, of your first segment. And first to observe, uh, the S&P made its high for the year on September 21st. That was, uh, that was an expiration day Friday uh, in September. Uh, since we've had this selling with high VIX, with lots of put buying that you're discussing and uh, we all can see it. Uh, I also observe, I guess it was Monday and Tuesday of last week, October 1st and 2nd, when there was rallying. And the news, if we recall back Monday, October 1st, was that there was an agreement with the United States and Canada to join the Mexico-Canada-U.S. trade deals. Uh, and during that rally, uh, on that news, I recall you describing uh, uh, quite significantly uh, your observation of lots of shorting uh, of individual stocks in that rally. So we had yep. player shorting stocks at those highs. Uh, we've had a decline now with lots of put buying, uh, and I'm uh, I'm always cognizant of short squeezes that it can occur into options expirations, which, as you mentioned, is seven days from now. And so I'm wondering if you can just elaborate a bit further and might also share uh, what, uh, what you are observing as you look at uh, the options players and the likely target price for the S&P closing come expiration. We've got a decline. We're getting some fuel. Will it get lit? Will we get a squeeze sometime in the next seven days? I think so. I think we're probably going to get a little bit of it before the end of the day. Uh, looking at options, uh, pretty good indication that at least going into today that 2850 was uh, going to get at least tested. Now, the question is, is it closed back over that? 
um, on when you were talking about those dates, when we were looking at September 20th and uh, September 21st, uh, those had some of the largest uh, days of shorting, at least in the spies. Um, if you're looking at the daily numbers on the uh, 25th, uh, we saw some fairly uh, large numbers, uh, 20 per, almost 20 percent of the spies on September 25th. Um, or one out of five shares was traded as a short position. Um, that's normally it's somewhere around eight, maybe 10 or 11 percent, so about double. And in fact, uh, when you looked at the 21st of September, we had 31 percent or almost one out of three shares being shorted uh, up at those highs. Uh, on the SPY, that would have been uh, 291.99. You can see them in my little uh, volume bars here if you're watching on Tiger TV or in the den. Um, they really stand out as huge days when these folks were shorting. Uh, and it, it looked like they were selling the news, right? And they were, uh, not only did they know that they were going to sell, but they were shorting at the same time. Um, pretty, pretty large. And it didn't matter if you were looking at them or on Amazon because uh, you had a really rare occurrence in Amazon, and that was everybody going uh, nuts and goo-goo over this to short it. Uh, let's see, what was the big short day out here? We had uh, the second and the third with Amazon, uh, one out of uh, every five or more than one out of every five shares was initiated as a short position. Uh, the big short day was also the 25th on Amazon. So we can go back and look at that fairly quickly here, where it is, right there. Um, so they were starting to short this thing starting on the 25th. Um, didn't kind of started off big and, and continued all the way in the last three or four days, uh, pushing the stock down, but fairly large percentages in these bigger stocks. Uh, but generally, um, when everybody shorts, it tends to not only be quick, but burn out fairly, fairly fast. The old saying is the uh, light bulb that burns twice as bright only burns half as long. And that's kind of the truth when everybody gets incredibly bearish. But, uh, you know, we've got, I looked at the options last night. They basically said 2850 um, on the, uh, on the S and P's. And my guess is that what they did today was sell a absolute boatload of puts. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are short. And my guess is we're going to see that probably go to like 2890 uh, before the uh, uh, end of options expiration. Maybe higher. But uh, the last 30 minutes of the day is going to tell us a great deal. A move I uh, back. And, and that uh, your your. Uh, you're referring to what you regularly display uh, on Tiger TV, that uh, that options, uh, I guess you'd call it a Max Payne graph, uh, looks like a couple of hockey sticks on a, on a graph. And what you're saying, uh, do I hear you, or excuse me, do I hear you correctly saying the data as you looked at it um, just uh, yesterday or the day before, the number was 28.50 for an SPY close. But that could uh, shift to a higher level with with additional put selling is the idea. Yeah, on the spies uh, last night it was to do it twenty six twenty seven. I guess we can zoom in a little farther. Um, and twenty seven seventy last night. You can see it on the on Tiger TV right now. Hopefully. Yes. Thank you very thank much. Everybody can see. So, yeah, that was it last night. Now, we'll look at it, and I, I can get kind of a, uh, a uh, rule of thumb during the day, but I really like to wait and see because they can change rather briskly the last uh, few minutes of trading because a lot of this stuff is buried in dark pools until uh, the very end of the day. But uh, Of course. So, so far, it does look like two things are occurring. One. Option market makers are selling a lot of puts, and two, they are very proud of calls. They are not, the, the call price did not fall into, normally they do. Normally I'd be buying calls today instead of buying individual stocks. But uh -huh. pretty, very, and let me put it this way, extremely proud 
of the calls, which makes me think that that uh, they don't want any real risk if this thing starts ripping higher, right? I got you. So, yeah. so now I'll watch it. I'll look at it after I'm off the show. But right at the moment, I didn't see anything that said uh, these guys believe that the end of the world's coming. So are are they setting up for a decent squeeze with uh, you know 60, 70 points in a couple of days? Uh, would that be something? I think the answer is yes, and we'll see. But uh, got to keep an eye on it. Um, if this thing gets going, my guess is that we could easily close back at 28.50 at the end of the day. But we're starting to run out of time for that. David, thanks so much. Appreciate you it. Bet. Bye now. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I had a uh, quick question out here from uh, one of our faithful viewers, uh, and he wanted to know about uh, somebody talking about huge amounts of margin uh, in the market. Uh, and I was going to say FINRA actually shows these. You can go to their web page um, and take a look at it. But uh, it's a little bit behind, um, about a month or so. But it does give you an idea how... Um, Horribly, uh, people are into the margin part of the business. Um, actually, it's actually become a little lighter. Uh, but if you want a link to this, uh, just give me an email. But uh, it's FINRA.org investors 
or, uh, excuse me, FINRA.org slash investor slash margin dash statistics. Um, but, you know, there isn't that much as far as private uh, uh, retail traders are doing. And people weren't, weren't diving in, at least uh, not over the last few months. So we didn't see a real build. Uh, it's been rather steady. Um, and again, kind of a good indication when everybody goes on margin that you've hit some kind of learn long-term top. Um, really haven't seen that. It's been pretty static over most of the rest of the year. Let me zoom in a little bit. Someone's asked me to do that. So you can look at that, but uh, you can always email me at path at TFNN to take a look at it. Uh, what else do we have going on? Uh, keep a close eye on volume. There we go. Take a look at that. 5.7 uh, billion shares on the CBOE volume page. Uh, what else do we have out here? Eh, that's about it. Okay. Um, wanted to look oh, at the SMHs. Um, this looks like there's many stocks in these SMHs uh, that are either bottoming today or probably will bottom over the next couple of days. So you want to be looking at them. Uh, volume's pretty good. We're going back into these high volume lows uh, that we saw in April, April 24th, actually. Um, saw uh, kind of pretty much the low in these. Um, again, you're, I think, in a bigger trading range in these semiconductors, and you want to start looking at some of the ones that have been beat up the worst. Uh, not necessarily whether or not you want to buy them, uh, but certainly whether or not you think that there is uh, some kind of low coming back in. Now, AMAT, probably the worst. We've discussed the reasons why. Uh, you've got a doji out here on AMAT, a fairly large one. So tomorrow will be a very good indication for you. If we start bouncing on AMAT, uh, if the dog with the most fleas can start moving higher, you want to start giving note to that right there. Uh, 34.10 was the low today. Uh, and Eh, you know, just there just aren't a lot of people making money uh, at uh, sub 10 nanometer um, chip production. Um, a lot of them have stopped. And until that gets turned back on, this probably won't go to the moon. But at the same time, at some level, this thing becomes attractive. Uh, and you've got your doji today. Now, this takes you back in to kind of this uh, eh, sideways action that goes back to May of. 2017 all the way through April 18th when this finally gapped up and started moving higher. Uh, and you're back into that support area, which actually should be fairly good. Um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, just uh, other stocks that seem like they should have found a bottom and we wanted to look at today on the show. Uh, come on. I don't know why. I got internet problems. Maybe. Let me try again. Uh, there we go. Was I doing AMAT? What was I doing? Yeah. Uh, Umbrella. Let's see, right there. There. Okay. Um, I was wondering whether we'd get some kind of reversal signal off of this one. Uh, of course, uh, their claim to fame was that they make compression chips for GoPro cameras or GoPro type cameras. Uh, they're breaking under the $33.39 low. And again, these are the stocks I'm looking at, not because I'm thinking about buying them, although this thing does look like if it popped back above $33.39, it could possibly be a buy into the 45 to 49 dollar uh, gap down that goes back to what is this uh, may 6th no june 6th um so you know some fairly decent meat on the bone uh, for just a bounce and a downtrend back up to that 40 and eh, 46 dollar level um uh, potentially um now you needed a lot of volume. You needed about 1.7 million shares. Got about a million today. 
Um, and again, the saying hasn't closed back above 3339, but there are a handful of these stocks that certainly look like any kind of move higher, not predicting that you're going to get that, but I think it's a more maybe more of a coin flip. But if it did close back above 3339, um, you really want to be looking at these SMHs. Uh, what else did I have in my list of stuff that I wanted to look at out here? Expedia, another one of the dogs that really hasn't moved much. It's had some real problems uh, at earnings. Got back up to its big gap down of 139.77 on July 27th. It's been moving back down. Uh, the question is whether you've picked up lots of volume into eh, what's been kind of a low out here about six, what is that, uh, June 28th. You're testing that. Uh, those had a little bit more volume. You got one, a little over one million shares today. Um, so is it going to blow it out? No. Could it go lower? Yes. Uh, but, you know, these are the stocks that have been the weakest up to this point. Uh, this JELD, I noticed this morning, um, was going to be interesting. This is a Chinese uh, company. Let's go ahead and do the profile because I can't always remember these Chinese companies and what they do. Um, a manufacturer sells doors and windows primarily in North America. Oh, okay, so I'm wrong on that. Company offers a line of residential interior and interior and exterior products, including patio doors, folding and sliding wall systems. So if you're in the building business, I think maybe they get a lot of stuff from China. I get some idea why this thing is that. Eh, I'll remember it eventually. Uh, nice little uh, little hammer out here. Got to 21.55. And again, I'm not going to be buying a lot of these dogs, but I am saying that there are a lot of these dogs, when they don't bark down here at these lows, you want to start looking at it. We looked at Sabre yesterday. So I want to come back on that one. Uh, get me a few things set up here. Okay. Uh, this one had been kind of holding in and cracked today. What do we got here? Got plenty of time. Um, we're back into this huge move up. May 1st high. This rocketed it up on 7.8 million shares. You're down back into it with uh, 850,000 shares so far today as you hit that handle. So you're probably looking at about 22 and a half. This would be very interesting. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 
800-900-9190. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're off 58 on the S&P cash. Dow's down 529. Uh, wanted to take a quick look at Weight Watchers. It looks like it's coming back into its low. That low is March 6, 57.57. Four and a half million shares. Um, got uh, 1.85 million shares so far. You might be into that candle before the end of the day. So, eh, Probably if you were short, the easy part of that short is starting to wane. Um, what, what did I want to look at out here? What did someone want me to look at out here? I've got a lot of emails, so we'll go through them. Make sure and get yours in or give me a call like John did earlier at 877-927-6648. Okay. Uh, XLE. Question on the XLE. XLE. Uh, we've been talking about this one, and it looked like it was about ready to roll. Um, part of this, of course, you sell whatever you got when everybody's selling, which is eh, probably not the right thing to do, but it's human nature. Uh, you sell what you can, and if it's at the highs, probably the easiest thing to sell. Uh, but a huge drop out here in the XLE, but not really a surprise. We've been getting into these uh, previous highs and didn't have a lot of juice, especially didn't have a lot of movement off this August 15th low. Energy started to uh, wane somewhat. Um, sealed air, which is, I think it's SEE, -E, um, is also a good one. Um, talked to one of the DEN members uh, this morning about some of the stocks. Uh, that certainly are in the supply line of uh, manufacturing in the United States and why these, you know, things like international paper, anybody that makes cardboard or things for products. And that is a lot of people were buying this in the uh, previous quarter, trying to get in before the uh, tariffs hit from China. So you had a lot of kind of a real big buildup. And now you've got kind of the pullback on it. Sealed air uh, makes. Um, those little bubble things you love to pop um, and squeeze that come in your packages. I don't get enough of those anymore. I used to get them a lot. I get the horrible peanut looking things, which I did. I find disgusting. Uh, but uh, it's just a, a, a strange pleasure of uh, busting little air bubbles. Uh, that actually busted its bubble today. Uh, but again, not a huge amount of volume. Um, you were looking for something like 5.3 million shares, which is the August 17th. You've gone through that with uh, 2.9 million shares yesterday. Today, just 1.4 million shares. What I suspect is a lot of these stocks that did break these lows on lighter volume going to pop at least back into this trading range before the week's out. Not this week, but the uh, week into uh, options expiration. Now, it may take a few days. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Uh, to, to, to what else is going on here? Just keeping an eye on some stocks. Question to look at Yelp. 
Um, Yelp had one of the more bearish highs that came fairly uh, significantly uh, up to 52.10, came back into the trading range. Uh, now, today, though, you're back into this gap up that had 26.3 million shares with 2 million shares. So, like I said, I think we're getting some fairly decent washouts. Um, depending on which stock it is, they may be acting horribly, uh, but uh, there is a, uh, not all stocks are made equal. So you want to keep an eye on it. But uh, kind of interesting to see this back in almost about halfway into the gap at about 41. Uh, that would be nice. And if volume does not increase on it, it looks like some of these, uh, especially Yelp and maybe even Snap, uh, might be close to being stopping uh, to uh, uh, having uh, at least some temporary lows. Uh, I think my Internet's slow. Slow, slow, slow. Why is it so slow? There it goes. Um, the SOX looks like it's going to be the first broad index to bottom out. Um, it's getting back into these strong days up, but the strong days up didn't have all that much juice back in uh, early May. You've got a low 165.07. Uh, but I don't know if it's actually going to get there. We got finally got some volume today in this, and that may be the temporary part. You would probably look for a bounce uh, of 177 uh, to reshort this. Uh, that would probably be about one, yeah, 175, 177 would be resistance on the way back up. Uh, this kind of trades kind of long in the tooth, and generally when everybody starts throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, normally you get a, fair, a low within a couple of days, so you want to keep at it. One of the reasons I think that maybe some of the semiconductor space may be finding um, lows here in the next couple of days is the stocks that, like AMAT, the worst performing ones, are actually down here and not looking that bad. Uh, Seagate Technologies, Western Digital, the hard drive makers, these guys have been uh, a pariah on the market. Uh, this gap back up on the uh, 8th of uh, January of this year, it's kind of made a big, big uh, dome top. It's back into that gap lower, uh, but that gap up started on 23.4. It's called 23.5 million shares. Uh, we are now back into it last three days, 2.7, uh, 5, and today 3.3 million shares. Um, so let's go look at Western Digital. And again, the ones that started going down first generally are the first ones to bottom, not that you want to buy them uh, particularly, but uh, they give you an indication that, yes, that there is uh, hope. The market's just not going to fall apart. All the wheels fall off and the wagon turn upside down. Um, Western Digital had, well, let's go to a little shorter time frame here. Uh, to, to, to. Okay. Uh, on Western Digital, you had a September 12th low at 53.61, 7 million shares. Got into it with 4 million shares yesterday. Got a little uh, hammer time here with 3.2 million shares. So we want to keep an eye on it. But, you know, if this thing comes in at 3 million shares, not going to be a horrible day for this thing uh, at 53 bucks. Of course, it wasn't, it was 100 bucks not that long ago. So uh, it's going to take a long consolidation. I'm just suggesting that the ones coming down the first, might be the ones coming down, uh, come, uh, at least bottoming the first. Uh, UBS had another interesting one. Uh, to, 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 okay. And that is UBS. Um, UBS needed about 1 million shares to hit the July 12th low. Uh, you had uh, 2 million shares a couple days ago. Yesterday, 1.4 million shares. Today, uh, going down with 886,000 shares. So far, let's go back a little bit farther. Uh, Long-term support on UBS has been in this price range. And uh, when you popped up on 4.2, almost 4.3 million shares. You're back into there with some lighter volume, about half the volume that you gapped up on it. Um, back on that, uh, what is that? 
April 24, 2017. Jason Path has just launched his weekly newsletter, The Quantitative Edge, available only at TFNN.com. Right now, you can sign up for Jason's outstanding weekly report, including midweek updates whenever warranted, with a 30-day money-back guarantee included, so you have nothing to risk. Jason develops his trade recommendations by creating an ensemble of predictive and mathematical models trained on data by leveraging a variety of techniques, including market-based computer simulations. Jason then combines these sophisticated predictive and analytical models with deeply researched macro outlooks to identify opportunities in a number of different markets for traders to act on. Whether you're looking to trade futures, equities, commodities like crude oil and gold, forex, or cryptos, Jason covers it all. Sign up for Jason Paff's weekly trading newsletter right now by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the quantitative edge under the newsletters tab. TFNN.com, educating investors. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we have an email about Snap. Um, no signal yet. Out here just continues lower. Um, some bad news actually for Snap. They had somebody uh, either torture somebody or kill somebody uh, on one of their live streams. And so I'm going to say that you're probably going to have a couple of days of bad juju for Snap. All of them have had this problem. Uh, energy is about there, but the question is whether or not you've got. Uh, the expansion out here uh, all the way, uh, that'd be about 21 to 10, wouldn't it? 21, do you have that? Don't have it. Let's go ahead and do it, though, with the last few minutes we've got. Uh, if that's A, and that's B, and that one is C, That sets up a one-to-one -one and three. Uh, wow, that is much bigger than I thought. If you look at the bigger one, uh, that actually sets up a one-to-one to, -one to $3.75. But, uh, man, that would, that, yeah, that is fairly large. <laughs> so uh, you can keep an eye on that. Uh, again, the stocks I'm going to be watching going into the close today are the stocks that have performed the worst up to this point. 
and even before the market started to roll over. Um, and uh, keep an eye on Amazon too. But uh, Seagate, uh, Western Digital, let's take a quick look at Amazon on our way out the door and see uh, what we see in that today. Um, you've pulled off, you've broken, you come down, volume's fairly good today. You're back into this low that goes back to July 31st. That had 5.7 million shares. We have 7.7 uh, .7 already. So one of the weaker parts of this market is this part that had been the strongest. We'll be back in 24 hours, 23 hours, actually. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bad Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.